Park City's Baptist Church. I am so excited to join you on your virtual retreat as you are exploring mind, body, and soul. And I'm excited to get to contribute to the mind portion with some brain research. My name is Dr. Julie Frattantoni, and I'm a cognitive neuroscientist at the Center for Brain Health. Um, and so I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the latest findings from our research. So as I mentioned, um, just a quick introduction, uh, the Center for Brain Health is located right by Lovefield Airport. And we are a team of clinicians and researchers and scientists that for the last few decades have been researching um, the human brain and really focused on optimizing potential. And so our vision and our mission is to unlock human potential through improved brain health and performance and um, really offering that to as many people as we possibly can. So we're really focused on translational research um, taking our scientific discoveries and turning those into programs uh, and opportunities for the greater public and community to engage with and learn from and really improve their life. So um, that's a bit about us. And a big part of what we're doing is we want to redefine or um, have a new definition of what it means to have a healthy brain or to um, have brain health. And so typically um, when we think about health, it's just like, oh, if you're not sick, then you're healthy. Um, but we really think it's so much more than that. So uh, we are defining brain health as a state of performing at your personal best and really being able to thrive within your life context, not simply the absence of disease. Um, additionally, I spoke about potential and so one of the greatest discoveries in the last couple decades of neuroscience research is this idea that there is no ceiling, that there's always room to continuously improve no matter what age you are, um, and uh, that the brain can constantly learn and strengthen. And so this is how we're thinking about brain health. And I start with this definition because this is really the impetus or kind of the underlying concept behind our largest uh, research project or initiative called the Brain Health Project. And so if you attended the retreat last year, you got to hear from my colleague, Stacey Vernon, who shared with you the results from our pilot study. And um, so if you were not here, or even if you were, I'll give you a quick refresh on what it was that she shared. And what I'm going to share with you today is actually building upon that. So the Brain Health Project is a 10-year longitudinal study. So we just kicked off our first year really right as COVID hit um, and things shut down in March of 2020. And we conducted our first pilot study then, and we are ongoing enrollment now. And um, we largely kind of at a glance, what it looks like to be a participant in this brain research is doing assessments every six months. So we call these set of assessments, a brain health index, where you get a score that's really unique to you and um, is something that you can track over time. And so these are done online at your own pace every six months. Um, the next aspect of this is quarterly coaching calls. So getting to meet, um, do a virtual call with a brain health coach every three months. And this, uh, in these coaching calls, you discuss things like going over your brain health index scores, talking about what those mean, um, talking about goals that you have for yourself um, in your daily life of ways that you want to improve your own brain health, and then really um, what strategies and training to focus in on. And really especially ways to really apply that in your everyday life. So helping kind of translate and make that connection for here's what I'm learning and then here's how it applies to me. And then the third big component of uh, this research study is the training. So the last few decades, we have really focused on what we call um, smart training. It's cognitive training that focuses on the frontal lobe, executive functions, things like organization and problem solving and planning and teaching people strategies um, for really how to use your brain in the most efficient way to reduce stress, to perform your best, um, and to have brain health. So these um, are the three main components of that. And we did this, like I mentioned last year, 
um, published this paper. So if you're curious to look at the results from that pilot study, we did get that published in the journal Frontiers of Public Health. And um, so you can look that up there, but the, the gist, the main finding was that we saw that with people who, um, well, really overall 75% of participants uh, improved about at least five points on their brain health index. And um, the, and really just that this is feasible, that we can do, we can deliver our training on an online format, we can do our assessments this way, and people can engage in coaching and really um, stay engaged. So that's exciting. And really um, continuing to expand on this idea. So one of the ideas that we introduced to you last year, you may um, recognize this wheel figure. Um, and so these are largely the components when we think about brain health. So we said, um, you know, your brain is so much more than just your memory. Uh, your brain is responsible for um, your aspects of daily life, um, things like sleep and your mindset, your daily responsibilities, um, your well being, mood, resilience, quality of life, your social interactions, uh, compassion, social support. And then um, the big purple section on the top, uh, those are those cognitive functions we more traditionally think of like attention, um, processing speed, and then more complex skills like innovation and problem solving. And then of course, the very center, your brain systems, we're doing a pilot that's looking at uh, using brain imaging to look at things like brain blood flow and connectivity and seeing how those things change with training. Um, but I bring up this visual again to share that this is sort of how we are talking about these concepts. And this is really, these are um, the different uh, measures all around the outside are what make up the different components, the different measurements we're taking that make up the brain health index. And so um, as we think about these, this is just sort of how we as researchers intuitively organize them into these groups. But what we've learned um, since conducting this pilot, and as we've collected more and more data, we have um, over 11,000 participants currently in the study. Um, we are starting to see the data kind of take shape in a different form. And what I mean by that is when we started, we had this hypothesis that we said, we know the brain is responsible for um, all of these different things. And we know that they all influence each other in different ways. So you likely have experienced if you didn't sleep well, then maybe the next day, you know, your focus or your memory wasn't as good. Um, and then when you're, when that's not well doing as well, then maybe your mood isn't as good. Or if you had an argument with someone and your social relationships um, were tense, then that might affect, you know, your mindset. And so the point being that all these different things relate to each other in different ways. And when we're stronger in some areas that can help make up for being weaker in other areas and um, the other way around. So just kind of a way of thinking about this. And so what I'm excited to share with you is the emergence of three factors. So those elements that were all around the outside of the wheel that I mentioned have sort of regrouped and reorganized themselves into three new factors that we are calling resilience, fortitude, and clarity. And um, I know resilience and fortitude may sound like synonyms, but I'm going to tell you how we are defining them here for the purpose of the study and as we talk about them um, for this talk. So resilience is really a factor that's a reflection of a person's capacity to overcome challenges and to enjoy rich, fulfilling experiences. So this is encompassing measures of social support, social engagement, compassion, happiness, resilience, uh, life satisfaction. And, um, and then fortitude is a little different in that it's really honing in on a person's ability to remain emotionally balanced in the face of difficult situations, to really be able to handle adversity um, and remain productive and capable throughout tough times. And so this is this, uh, the measures that largely are driving the factor of fortitude are depression, anxiety, stress, and happiness. And then the third one we're calling clarity. And this is really a reflection of um, being your really readiness to be able to reason through complex situations 
um, and come up with multiple opportunities or solutions. And so this is looking at those more complex brain functions like strategic attention, innovation, um, reasoning, and then also things like sleep and your outlook and compassion as well. So you may have noticed that compassion shows up in a couple places. It shows up both in clarity and resilience. And then happiness shows up in both resilience and fortitude. So it's really interesting the way these things are tending to group together. And um, what I'm going to share with you is three different case studies um, of participants that have been de-identified to protect their privacy, but real life examples of what it looks like to have these different factors be driving your brain health. And then I'm going to share two tips for each of the factors of things that you can do in your everyday life to boost your resilience, fortitude, and clarity. Okay, so the first case study is a 65-year-old woman who owns her own business. Um, and remember, we kicked off this pilot right at the beginning of the COVID shutdown. So she was really concerned at the time, at her time one brain health index about um, the impact COVID was gonna have on her business as well as her social relationships. Um, she is someone who lives alone. And so she was feeling really isolated and just concerned overall. And so she was encouraged um, to use some of the tools that she that she learned in our SMART training, our, some of our cognitive strategies of learning, thinking about new ways that she can engage in her relationships and different ways she can engage her work. And so when she came back um, after she took her second brain health index um, at that next coaching session, she reported that she had been making an effort to really intentionally engage with friends using Zoom, as well as meeting outside when she could. And um, that her, the training had also inspired her to take a different approach to some large projects that she was working on at work. And so she said that this was helping her feel more inspired and challenged in her activities. And so I'll orient you to the graph here. Um, what it's showing is the black line is the overall brain health index score. And then beneath that, you'll see the three different colors, resilience being red, fortitude in green, and clarity in blue. And um, you'll see that they each change a little bit from time one to time two. But the largest driving factor here for this woman is her resilience. And so you can see that um, in the steeper slope there for the red line. Um, and so this is showing that, and this is kind of a neat sort of breakdown or glimpse into that index because, for example, you and I may have had the same index score at our time one, and we may have seen similar changes to time two. However, they may be for very different reasons. Um, and so largely the reasons for this individual was um, because she was boosting these things related to resilience. And that was really, um, she was experiencing those benefits in her life. And so my two tips for you are one, prioritizing meaningful relationships. Social support is one of the most protective factors when it comes to being able to bounce back from sickness or injury, um, as well as boosting your immune system and helping prevent illness. So having strong social support not only is helpful um, in building resilience, but also just your physical health, but then definitely for your brain health. So how do you do this? Well, it's as you know, simple as putting pen to paper and in your calendar, marking off time for intentional time throughout your week, and then making sure each day um, that you have time to connect with others. If um, Even if that looks like just taking 10 minutes and making a quick phone call or sending a text message. Um, of course, meeting in person is always, there's really nothing to replace that. So meeting uh, when you can safely or taking appropriate precautions to engage with other people, but if not, then you know Zoom, FaceTime, um, regular phone calls are fantastic ways to do that. So making sure that you are connecting with people you love and trust and care about and um, just making that a priority. The second tip for building resilience is to seek inspiring and purposeful activities. We have seen in the research that purpose, having a sense of purpose is a huge factor in longevity and even in cognitive um, strength or decline over time. And so really knowing, taking time to identify um, those things that really give you purpose and then looking at your week and saying, you know, how much of my time am I able to spend doing these things that really inspire me and drive me? 
um, and making adjustments so that you can spend more of your time doing these things that really give you life. Okay, this next case study is one um, of a big increase in fortitude. So that green line there is really driving the change for this individual. This is a 59 year old um, woman who is a writer and editor. And um, she had four really great takeaways that I wanna share with you from what she learned and kind of how she was implementing these things or implementing the things she learned in, in the training. So the first one was just that the training in general just made her think about her own brain health. Um, so a lot of times I think it can be easy to just sort of expect your brain to just keep doing what it's doing, right? We don't have to really think about it much. It kind of just does what we need it to in all these different situations. Um, but for her, it actually made her really pause to think, okay, what am I doing that's helping my brain health? What am I doing that's hindering it? And then the second piece of that is that she felt that she had more control over her brain um, by understanding what are things that hinder or help or what are things I can do about increasing my own brain health um, made her feel like she just had more autonomy and control and felt empowered. And then her third takeaway was that um, identifying her two elephants each day, which I'll explain what elephants are in the next um, study, but identifying the two elephants made her realize that every task is not equal. And by taking the time to really think through and identify them, that it actually helped her to calm down and um, that she was able to prioritize getting those things done uh, for the day. So, and then her last one was just that reframing was a huge game changer for her that, and that really showed up in her stress and depression scores um, that you could see that reframing was really helpful in having, um, just a healthy, positive mindset as she was approaching life. And so um, at her second brain health index, when she came back for her time two, she shared um, that she had been furloughed and she actually had lost her job. And so this of course is um, really stressful. And um, what was great though, is that she uh, had that, those skills of reframing and she was really able to hone in on what we call the brain power of unknown, which is all about um, embracing wonder and change and kind of seeing the opportunities there um, and really looking to that with curiosity rather than fear. So she was able to really take reframing and the brain power of unknown as she's pursuing looking for a new job. And so, fortitude, my two recommendations for you there to boost your fortitude are reframing challenges, um, you know, telling yourself things like I can do it or it can happen, but really just as an overall approach of seeing obstacles, not as a threat, but rather as an opportunity and um, really reframing that in the way that you are going to approach and tackle things that come your way. And um, the second one is expressing gratitude on a daily basis. This one's really important to helping bolster uh, fortitude during tough times. And I'll give you a couple tips around a gratitude practice from the literature. Um, so the science shows that there are tremendous benefits um, to, with our mood in terms of, and just overall well being for practicing gratitude. But it really needs to go beyond just making a cursory list. So you know, rather than just saying I'm thankful for my job or my family or, you know, having a place to live, really drilling down and getting specific. And so, for example, you know, being grateful that I have, you know, a warm place to sleep at night and I have my favorite comforter that's fluffy and, you know, it's my favorite color or it's something that was given to me as a gift from my mom or a grandmother made something like that. So really narrowing in on what those specifics are and then feeling how it makes your body feel as you are recalling all those specific details about something that really fills you with gratitude. And so that somatosensory experience of gratitude in your body is really what the practice is. It's honing in on kind of just being in that state. And when you are in that state of gratitude, it's impossible to kind of simultaneously be in a state um, of fear or worry. And so again, helping with kind of bolstering the reframing and just overall really strengthening fortitude. All right. The third case study I'll share with you is um, one of really increased clarity. And so this participant is a 63-year-old male. He 
is a professor at a university and is really interested in um, technology and innovative advancements and does some um, works with a military focused organization around how to help and educate veterans. And so um, his goals, he had two big goals for himself and they were focused around strategic attention and innovation. So strategic attention is really this idea of being more intentional with information intake and how you approach your daily tasks. And then innovation is um, really about pushing yourself to be innovative, not just in your work, but also in your personal life. Um, and so he was really wanting to push himself to come up with multiple ideas, more than one solution, um, making sure he was thinking about different aspects of things before making decisions. And so I know a lot of times we can think about innovation just in the sense of, you know, technology advancements, but innovation can really be a part of everyday life from how you um, choose to celebrate a birthday to how you're going to cook a meal and use ingredients and, you know, present it on the plate um, to how you rearrange your living room. Uh, these are all places for innovation and to shake things up. And so, um, the other thing that this participant mentioned was just being really busy. And so wanting to have tools um, to how to handle, to better manage information overload and just feelings of endless to-do lists. And so you can see here that blue line of clarity was already you know, strong to begin with, um, but increased um, very, very sharply. And so that was driving um, really big gains in his overall index. So two takeaways or two action items for you to improve your clarity. Achieve two small sub goals each day towards your dreams or your, your goals or your mission or your project or whatever it is that you're working on that gives you purpose. Um, this is where I'm circling back now to this term elephants that I had introduced in the last case study. We have the term elephants and rabbits. And so the saying is when you're hunting elephants, don't get distracted chasing rabbits. And the idea here is that um, you've got to focus on those goals, those things that are going to push you forward. So really taking the time each day to be strategic and identify what are the things that are not just not urgent, but that are really important. And rabbits are those things that seem urgent or they give you a false sense of productivity where you're checking things off your list, but it's actually not pushing you forward towards you know, that harder task that you need to do um, in order to reach your goals long term. And um, this also greatly helps alleviate stress because a lot of times, you know, we get busy and are just checking things off the list um, that are rabbits and then those big important things aren't getting done and that adds to stress. So knowing that you're setting aside time for those, I'll also mention that an elephant is something that could be accomplished within a 45 minute chunk. So if you can allocate two 45 minute chunks in your day to really focus um, or protect that time so you can push your elephants forward, uh, we really recommend that. The second recommendation for clarity boosting is around being innovative around your priorities. And this really increases mental energy. So like I mentioned, innovation can be in really any or every aspect of life, just depending on what you deem important. So you don't need to innovate everything. You don't necessarily need to innovate the way you brush your teeth, um, but you may wanna innovate in the way um, that you're gonna host you know, a dinner party or the way that you're going to even just kind of you know, writing a thank you note, um, how you wanna express gratitude or really you know, communicate or let that person know that um, you appreciate them. So, um, the brain really craves novelty and change and new learning. And by just kind of being in the status quo and doing the same old day in and day out um, is not great for promoting brain health. And so really trying to innovate where you can and, and seeking out those opportunities is important. So those are your two tips for clarity. Okay, so as a recap, our three emerging factors that we have learned and seen all these different components rearrange themselves into our resilience, fortitude, and clarity. And so um, resilience being the ability to connect with others and be driven by a larger purpose, fortitude being the ability to remain emotionally balanced when facing difficult situations, and then clarity being able to quickly adapt to changing situations, create solutions, and keep a calm brain. 
And we have a spot here you'll see for an emerging factor that we expect that as we continue to learn from our participants and gather more data, um, we may see things emerging around maybe vitality and having to do with sleep and exercise or um, we don't know, but it's really exciting to let the data kind of drive and help us understand what are the things that we can be doing to really um, boost our overall brain health and performance. And so if you um, would like to partner with us in this research, we, it is open call to everyone. We have participants not only just in the United States, but really all over the world um, in English speaking countries. We are limited to English at this time, but um, yeah, you can check it out at thebrainhealthproject.org. Um, there's more information there just about the project. There's links to our published papers. Um, as well as frequently asked questions. But yeah, this is something where you would get access to these trainings if you enjoyed the tips that I shared today. Um, and if you wanna find out what your own brain health index is and watch it change over time um, and see ways that you can strengthen that across, across the lifespan. So I just wanna encourage you that this is really an endeavor that um, we are seeking to just empower as many people as possible to know that um, you don't have to accept this trajectory of decline as you age, but really you can maintain or even continue to gain um, into late in life. And so our, I hope that um, what I shared today was encouraging to you and that you can use these tips and see improvements or just feel the benefits in your everyday life and um, would love for you to just, um, yeah, take those things and, and apply them and let us know what you think. And um, ultimately, that we can together create a better brain, um, really empower people to do that so that they can live a better life and we can together create a better world. So thank you so much for having me, letting me join you here on your retreat. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your time. Thank you and have a great rest of your day or night.